This lecture is about the disjoint set data type and about the algorithmic design strategies that we use when we're trying to invent a new data structure. Let's first review where we came across disjoint sets. Earlier in the course, we studied the minimum spanning tree problem. The problem is this, given an undirected graph with edge weights, we wanted to compute a minimal spanning tree. The algorithm that we came up with Kruskal's algorithm proceeds by building up a forest. A forest is a collection of connected components. What we have here is four components, the blue component, the red component, yellow component, the green component. And the algorithm at each time step is a simple greedy algorithm. It looks at all the edges that might possibly join one of these two components, picks the cheapest of them, and joins those two components. In this case, the cheapest is edge with weight five, so we'll join those two components. We also looked at an application of this algorithm, image segmentation. We start with an image, we define a grid, we place vertices on a grid, and we have edges between adjacent vertices. Here I've made a hexagonal grid. And then we define edge weights for each of the edges on the grid, I'm defining the edge weight to measure how similar the pixels are. If the pixels at two vertices are very similar, same color and so on, I'll make the edge have a very low weight. And finally, we can take this graph and we can run the minimum spanning tree algorithm on it. The minimum spanning tree builds up clusters of vertices, and this is what it looks like, slowly, steadily building up more clusters. So what does the code behind Kruskal's algorithm look like and what data structure does it need? Here's what the code for Kruskal's algorithm looks like. The key steps are in this inner loop here. What we do repeatedly is we pick an edge joining two vertices. Let's suppose that we've decided to pick an edge from vertex U to vertex V. We say, give me the set containing U, give me the set containing V, and then we'll merge those two sets. Just for completeness, we ought to mention the other operation. To build up the initial state of the data structure, what we do is we create one set for every vertex. So let's draw that on. We have an add singleton method, which takes an item and creates a set consisting purely of that item. So this is the disjoint set data structure. Let's just write it out more formally. The abstract data type disjoint set has three methods get set with, add singleton, and merge. When we call get set with, we tell it the item, for example, a vertex U or V, it gives us a handle, a reference to the set. The data type doesn't specify what those handles are, it's just some way to refer to a set. And if we have a handle for a set, then we can take two set handles and we can merge them. So that's the abstract data type. Let's think how we might implement this. Here's a very simple implementation. I'm going to represent each set as a tree. For each of the trees, I'll pick out one vertex to be the representative of the set. I'll make all the other vertices point to it. So I'm calling this the flat forest implementation. It's a forest because it's made up of a collection of trees and it's flat because each tree has depth one. And when we call get set with, I'm going to use the root of the tree as the handle for the set. So all that get set with needs to do is it just looks up the pointer to find the root of the tree. Very easy, O of one lookup. If I want to merge two sets, then I'll take one of the sets and I'll update all the parent pointers for each of its elements and make it point to the root of the other tree. An obvious heuristic to improve performance is to keep track of the size of each of the sets and when we're deciding which set we'll update the pointers in, update the pointers from the smallest set. That reduces the amount of work we have to do. This is known as the weighted union heuristic. Just a quick note on the nuts and bolts of the implementation. If we have a disjoint set like this made up of two sets, we'll represent it as two trees. Under the hood, here's how it might be implemented. In addition to pointers from each of the child nodes up to the root, 
I've also got pointers pointing to the next element in the set. These fat grey arrows. What are these for? Well, if we think about what happens during merge, in merge we choose one of the trees and we walk through all of its elements and update the parent pointers. So, for example, if I'm merging the yellow tree into the blue, I, these are the pointers that I'll need to update. I'll walk through the yellow tree following the fat grey lines and at each stage I'll update the parent pointer. So that's one simple impl implementation, the flat forest implementation. The trouble with this is it can be quite a lot of work to update all the pointers. So to avoid that work, here's a different implementation. I'll call this the deep forest. Again, I'll implement it as a forest, i.e. as a collection of trees, and I'll let the root of each tree be the handle that I use to refer to that set. So with this implementation, merge is, is very, very simple. All we need to do is we take one of the trees and update its parent pointer to point to the root of the other tree. Get set width is a little bit slower though. If we take this bottom element and ask what set does it belong to, we need to walk up the entire tree until we find the root. And depending on how deep the tree is, there may be many steps involved. It suggests an obvious heuristic to speed things up. Let's keep track of the rank, or another word for rank is the height of each tree, and when we merge, I'll attach the lower rank tree to the higher rank. So in this particular case, the blue tree had rank 2, the yellow tree had rank 1, the yellow tree has lower rank, so I'll make that the child of the tree with larger rank. More precisely, the rule is this, new rank equals maximum of rank 1 and rank 2, where rank 1 and rank 2 are the ranks of the two trees we're joining. That's actually not the full story. If the two trees have equal rank, then I'll pick one of them arbitrarily, and the new rank will be the old rank plus 1. That's the obvious heuristic to speed things up. It's called the union by rank heuristic. So let's review the algorithms we looked at. We looked at the flat forest implementation. In this implementation, get set with was very fast. All we need to do is look up a single pointer. And the price we paid is that merge was slow. Merge has to look potentially at a fairly large number of items to update their parent pointers. We looked at another implementation, deep forest. In deep forest, Get set with was slower. It needed to walk up the tree. But the upside was that merge was fast. Because it was lazy, it didn't bother tidying up the data structure, it just did the minimum amount of work possible to merge the two trees. The obvious question here is can we get the best of both worlds? Let's look back at a question that we've already studied. Let's look at the priority queue. And to make life simple, we'll only look at two of its operations, push and pop min. So what are the implementations we've seen? We've seen the binary heap. Pop min was very fast. The heap is completely organized, so it's very easy to just look up and find where the smallest element is. The downside is that push was slow. Whenever we push, we do full tidying up as we go. We looked at another implementation which made very different trade-offs. We looked at the linked list. In this implementation, popmin was very slow. It had to iterate through all of the nodes. But more importantly, the reason it's slow is it does some work to find the smallest element, and then it throws it away. It doesn't retain any ordering. It doesn't retain any organization of the data structure that can be used for next time. The flip side was that push was extremely fast, was very fast and lazy. And then we studied another implementation. We studied the Fibonacci heap, which in some ways was a combination of these two strategies. Popmin was fast. 
It did some tidying, and then it left the data structure semi-organized. In other words, the work it did was not wasted. The work it did had benefit for further invocations of the function. Push was also very fast. It was very fast and lazy. The obvious question is, can we invent an algorithm analogous to the Fibonacci heap, which has the best of both worlds, in which merge is very fast and lazy? And can we make get set with be fast at the same time? It will have to do some work to look up the root, but can we make it so that it leaves its mark on the data structure, leaves the data structure semi-organized so that next time round it's faster? This idea that the work we do now might be beneficial to future operations, that's the real essence of amortized design of algorithms. It is possible to achieve these things. We'll call the data structure the lazy forest. And its implementation is as follows. It starts off looking very much like the deep forest. Whenever you merge two trees, we'll just update the parent pointer of one of them. And when we call get set with, we have to do some work. We had to walk up the tree to find the root once. Let's walk up it a second time and update all of the nodes to point to the root that we found. This is called path compression. And a sensible heuristic to speed it up is exactly the same thing that we talked about for the deep forest. We'll keep track of the rank of each tree. And when we merge them, we'll make the lower rank tree be a child of the larger rank tree. When we update the rank, it will be based on the same formula as for the deep forest. One small change, when we flatten a tree using the path compression heuristic, we're not going to recompute the rank. If we wanted rank to be precisely equal to the height of the tree, we'd have to do an awful lot of work to look through all the nodes and ask, has the height changed? So rank won't be the true height, rank will just be an upper bound on the height. Let's write out a little bit about the complexity of these algorithms. For the flat forest, an aggregate analysis shows that any m operations on up to n items, these can be any m operations, any mixture of get set with, add singleton and merge, costs big O of m plus n log n. The proof isn't very hard. It's left as an exercise in the example sheet with some hints. For deep forest, there's a similar result. The exact formula and the proof of it, it's a bit longer. Look up Corman and Revistenstein. It's roughly a page long proof. For the lazy forest, this is a trickier analysis. It takes about four pages in Corman, Revistenstein. And I'll write out the answer here. The cost of m operations on up to n items is O of m times alpha n, where alpha n, it's a special function related to the Ackermann function. Alpha n is equal to zero for n equals 0, 1 or 2. Alpha n is equal to 1 for n equals 3. Alpha n equals 2 for n equals 4 up to 7. Alpha n is equal to 3 for n equals 8 to 2047. And alpha n equals 4 for n equals 2048 up to 10 to the 80. 10 to the 80 is more atoms than there are in the observable universe. So from the point of view of practical algorithm design, we'd say this is really O of M. Let's have a look at how these three implementations perform in practice. Here I'm running the same image segmentation that we saw earlier on, but with three different implementations of disjoint set. And I'm going to measure time in terms of number of pointers that have been looked up or modified. 